Yes, my dad had a lot of prejudices about Muslim culture or like Turkey in general. To my brother and I, we were invited to pray in a mosque. Oh, uh, has a lot of Muslim uh, heritage yeah. and culture remains. So I think we have a lot of similarities. After lunch on our yeah. siesta time, <laughs> we always get uh, Turkish shows. It's just not well paid enough for youngsters, so we all escape our country. Pantalon. <laughs> Pantalon. <laughs> Are you just repeating me or not? And then they invited us to sleep in a cave. So I literally slept on a rock solid floor with a carpet. So welcome to a new video, guys. Hi to every one of you from beautiful Budapest. We're in Budapest, but we're gonna talk about Spain and Turkey. I got my Spanish brother, Oscar, right here. We met in Athens, Greece, and now we're traveling to Budapest. Do you want to introduce yourself a bit? Hey, my name is Oscar, I'm from Madrid. I'm 24 year old. I love traveling, and that's why I met this beautiful cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so what does come to Spanish people's mind when they hear Turkey? Obviously, I know it's stereotypical, but we think about kebab. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then we think we think about textile industry, mainly like oh. uh, carpets. It's something really well known in, in Spain. And I would say the two main places we think about is Istanbul and Cappadocia. Yeah. Like especially Cappadocia yeah. is what they advertise the most in, in Spain. Like when you go to you know these kind of offices where they plan trips yeah. abroad, you will see first Cappadocia rather than any other part of. Turkey. Yeah, makes sense. Then what do Spanish people usually think about Turkish culture? We think you guys are really conservative. I think yeah. because of uh, what we think about Muslim religion. Sometimes when you travel to, to Turkey, you guys try to sell a lot of stuff to yeah. tourists and maybe sometimes it's a bit um, overwhelming. We think as well that you guys are good at football, I think. Like, it's, you know, football comes to my mind when we yeah. think about Turkey. Yeah, so, Arda Turan. Arda Turan. Arda Turan. <laughs> Of Atletico, so yeah, Arda Turan has been in my heart for a while. <laughs> You've been to Istanbul two times. Mm -hmm. How was your experience in Istanbul? It was amazing. Like, I don't have any other words to say than, than amazing. Like, people treat me like if I was uh, well, not a foreigner, you know, I was really welcomed in every place. Everyone was happy. The places were amazing. Food was unreal. We met local people. We visited the best places. For me, a place is made by the people, and that's what surprised me the most about Istanbul. Good to hear that. And how did your ideas evolve? A lot. For example, I'll be completely honest, my dad had a lot of prejudices about Muslim culture or like Turkey in general. And when we went there, we had a, we had a beautiful experience. We, we were invited to, my brother and I, we were invited to pray in a mosque. Oh. Uh, by a local person, no tourists were allowed. Well, he actually grabbed the hand of my brother. Yeah. And I was like, no way, you're not taking my brother. So <laughs> I was like, I'll go with you. And we ended up doing the whole prayer in the mosque. After the whole experience, we were the only tourists inside the mosque, like, you know, without the shoes, on, on our knees, following the prayer, just doing whatever people was doing. We were like kind of three to four second delay yeah. in every movement. But this guy knew that you were tourists. Uh, he 100% knew we were tourists. We couldn't even speak uh, with them. I don't know what he saw, but he was really had a really like welcoming energy to us. It was unreal, man. At the end of the mosque, he was in a line coming to say thanks, like I'm handshake my dad, my mom, me, my brother. And we actually got gifted a, a couple of hats, you know, and we couldn't even communicate properly. We put, you know, a little bit of broken English. My dad was in between excited, in between nervous, thinking, oh, why is all these people like approaching yeah. my kids? This trip broke all his prejudices about Muslim culture and like Turkey in general. They actually repeated the trip uh, three times. I went twice. Oh, wow. And I think it's beautiful to think that, you know, not to judge people for their cultures, their religions or history itself. Just what did you think about the food? Mert, I think he, he got to know me in this trip and he knows I'm a foodie person. Yeah. He's the one always hungry, let's go to a restaurant, you know, let's grab food. Do you remember your favorite food? I remember I was really surprised with what you guys call kebab itself, the different meats, you know, lamb, yeah. and the pizza, not the pizza. La, la margin. I was really surprised with that because a guy actually invited us for free. He was like, oh, grab a, grab a slice, <laughs> and it was beautiful. All the food was amazing, man. So then, what are the most common Turkish things in Spain? I know I repeat myself, but <laughs> kebab. I think maybe spices. You know, you guys have a lot of spices. Yeah. You know, the south of Spain has a lot of Muslim uh, heritage oh, yeah. and culture remains. So I think we have a lot of similarities. You could find Turkish delights, good Turkish restaurants as well. Mostly, mostly food. I recently read news mentioning that Turkish TV shows becoming increasingly famous in the Spanish industry. Oh, that's so true. Like, actually, one of the biggest channels in Spain is called Antena 3, where all Spaniards would watch the TV news every day. Like, after 
after lunch, on our yeah. siesta time, <laughs> let's say, we always get uh, Turkish shows. Actually, my mom loves them, you know, she watches uh, all these shows after after food. Uh, and it's becoming huge, man, like huge, huge. You can see a lot of shows, beautiful sceneries. Like, I'm Let's talk more about the Spanish culture then. What are the most stereotypical things about Spanish culture and people? Of course, everybody thinks we are really loud. And we are like, you're shouting around the street or something. And then as well, I would say the, the siesta itself. And that we are lazy, you know? People think we are a bit lazy. But that's true, though. <laughs> It's a bit true though, but no, not all of us. Oh, yeah, mainly siesta, lazy, and loud. <laughs> this siesta culture still exists? It does. Like in the older generations, my parents have siesta every day, you know, it's something something typical. I think it's more about the heat. You know, when summer is uh, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, after we have lunch, it's 40 degrees, 35 degrees outside. Not nice to be outside. After eating, you get so sleepy that I think we just sleep and... I spent some time in Spain and it is literally impossible to walk around 3, 4 p.m. Too hot and literally there is no one in the streets. We need it in Turkey. I think main issues with Turkish culture that we work a lot. During summer, it gets as hot as Spain, but still people keep working. We need the siesta culture. So what is a thing that you really like about your country? The sun. I lived a lot of time in the UK and in Ireland. And one of the things I miss the most is the, the sun. You know, I think the joy that people has. Any, anywhere you go, you'll find people being happy and uh, enjoying with their families and friends outside. So I think that's one of the nicest parts of, of Spain, to be honest. Okay, there comes the second question. What is the thing that you don't like about your country? Opportunities. Opportunities for younger generations are really reduced at the moment. Uh, even people like really well educated, having, you know, like really strong degrees. It's just not well paid enough for youngsters. So we all escape our country and it's sad. Yeah, we're facing the same problem. I don't know why all warm and nice countries have this problem. How is it typical Sunday for it, Spanish people? I think it's really family oriented. Typical Sunday would be like lunch with your family or have some cañas and a small beer with your family and friends. You know, just uh, el aperitivo. We yeah. It. And after the aperitivo, we go and have lunch in, in family. So I think that's a really typical, typical Sunday. But I think that's one similarity. I know you guys are really family oriented yeah. as well. We are as well. Like, yeah. you know, we, we do care a lot about our family and, and Sunday is a really good day to kind of celebrate with them and spend time together. Are there any things that you like to mention about your culture? In New Year's Eve, the last 12 seconds of the 31st of December, before it's the New Year, we eat grapes. So we eat one grape per last second of the year. Last you know, 12 seconds. We hear the bells of the square in Madrid, but they do it in every part of Spain. I actually teach my my foreigner friends and they all, once you do it once, believe me, you will. Like a challenge rather than a culture. <laughs> it's 12 wishes, so we make a wish per grape. So I came up with the list of words in Turkish that sounds similar to Spanish words. So I'm gonna tell the Turkish versions of them and I want you to tell the Spanish version. Okay, baño. Baño. The same. Camion. <laughs> Camion. <laughs> Pantalon. Pantalon. <laughs> Are you just repeating me or not? I swear, I swear. Masa. Mesa. Balcon. Balcon. Lavabo. Lavabo. It's Ma crazy. I didn't know we had so many words in common. Marca. Marca. <laughs> Canepe. Canapé. This one is hilarious. Chacal. <laughs> chacal. It's also called for an animal. We refer to a very filthy person as chacal as well. Like you're a chacal, like you're filthy, you know? No, we, we won't use that that way, <laughs> only for the animal. <laughs> Zurafa. Pirafa. Pijama. Pijama. Pardon. Perdon. Dush. Ducha. Fatura. Factura. Palabra. Palabra. We usually refer to a word that is not uh, true. It's, it's like yeah. bullshit. You're talking bullshit. It's like palabra, palabra. You're talking palabra. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. Bornos. Albornoz, we say. Castane. Castaña. Jacket. Jaqueta. It's not related to this topic as well, but I, I definitely want to mention this story in my video as well. You've been to Jordan and you had an experience. Could you mention about that story? I think it's the way you travel with the mindset you go to any country. If you go without prejudice and being open and, you know, respect everybody, I think you'll get into these type of situations. And I traveled the whole country from south to, to north with a car. When we stopped in Petra, uh, in Petra you have the Bedouins where they, they live in the desert. Basically you have the small village around it. 
but they live in the desert sometimes. They, they sleep in caves, really. Like, they don't care about phones, social media, money. They just live, you know. And I met a few of them with my with my friend, and we just invited them to, we share our food, you know. We had, you know, they were really happy to have us around, and we were asking a lot about their cultures. They invited us to stay overnight in Petra, which... In a not, cave? Yeah, which normally all tourists are kicked out of Petra. You can't stay at night. Why? Right? Because it's basically you pay an entry, you visit all the complex, it's huge. At a certain point, all tourists need to leave the area. We got invited to watch the sunset and like to walk around Petra and by night. It was fucking unreal, they treat us like family. And then they invited us to sleep in a cave. So I literally slept on a rock solid floor with a carpet. We made a barbecue, they taught us everything about their culture, religion, families. This morning they actually invited us to to another cave, a family cave with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us breakfast, yeah. all homemade. The olive tree apparently was next door and we had olives. Sounds like you could remain your whole life sleeping in another cave every every other night if right. you stay there. Such an inspiring story for people to travel and get off their comfort zone. All right, thank you very much, hermano. Make sure you subscribe for similar videos. You're making a lot of videos with Oscar as well. And you can find related videos in my YouTube channel. Adios. Adios, amigos. Take care.